Hey, how are you? Really quick, if you're waiting for a comment to be responded to, I have about 200 right now that I haven't responded to and I've got 30 more emails and I've got 12 direct messages on Discord and I just can't have the time to respond to everyone right now. I'm really sorry, but I've got to get filming and I've got you know things to manage in my own life and normal work day and things like that as well. So I'll get to them as soon as I can. I do apologize and I appreciate the trust that you put in me to ask me these kinds of questions, uh, but I just need time to get to it and I can't just get to it all at once. Uh, let's get on to 2023 10A problem 16, also 12A problem 13. In a table tennis tournament, every participant played every other participant exactly once. Right here at this period, you should stop and think, what does that mean? It means, and you should have it, if you're experienced, you should know this is n choose 2. Furthermore, you should know the shortcut for the calculation of that is n times n minus 1 choose 2. If you have not yet established that this is in fact true, take the left side and break it down, work within the factorials and confirm for yourself that it's true and then add it to your small notebook. It is a small notebook shortcut concept. Comes up a lot. Although there were twice as many right-handed players, as left-handed players, so maybe 2x and x, some kind of representation of the information so you can think about it, the number of games won by left-handed players was 40% more than the number of games won by right-handed players. So their wins, let's say that they win this, they're going to win 1.4 whatever games, uh, 1.4 times whatever games the right-handed players won. There were no ties and no ambidextrous players using one or the other hand. Can we really quickly side note, just thinking of it now, when they in the future upgrade previous concepts, wouldn't a good problem be where there was ambidextrous players? If you can think of a, a situation that came up in the last year or two, maybe pause the video and see if you can think of what question I'm thinking of, and I'll say it now, it is the alternators the alternators from the truth tellers, the liars, and the alternators who sometimes tell the truth and sometimes lie. Why not an ambidextrous player who sometimes plays right and sometimes plays left and every third game they play right and, you know, whatever. You can get really creative with that if you think about it. Maybe you should make some problems for yourself to try to anticipate questions they might create in the future. What is maybe even on the B test? What is the total number of games played? Okay, so total number of games played, if there's n people, that's what this is. This is the total number of games played. So I would love to tell you that I immediately created a brilliant algebraic calculation and was able to navigate and run the algebra and pull it off. And I probably could, and in fact, we will at the end. I'll just figure it out from my other solution how you can generate that. And so instead, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you kind of what my paperwork looks like because um, I test solved this. You can see it's just a lot of calculations of n choose two, six choose two, and a little bit of bash work there. And why did I do that? Because there's going to come times on the test when you don't perceive or cannot create the most efficient solve process. So if you look on the official MAA solutions eventually, or the AOPS ones, you're gonna see somebody who shows this, and I'll show it in the video, at least the way I would think of it, but you're not gonna always perceive that from a novel point of view where you've never encountered the problem. Especially when the time's ticking down, you're on 16 and you're really going for, you know, your any qualification at this point, pushing the limit of what you can answer under the time frame. So I tried and I tried to make some calculations and 1.4 times this, but it's not really 2x. And then I got kind of lost in it. And I just said, you know what? If these are the answers, let's just try them out. Let's just see what happens. I'm just curious. And so sometimes it's what you do at those moments. If you're able to overcome the adversity, the deserted island principle, what am I doing right now? I'm going to start flicking switches. If you watch Amy Mindset, that is one of the analogies I use in there. You start flipping the switches. You just try things out. You don't know what's going to happen but the time is ticking and you need to survive. It's no holds barred. I don't care what the genius kid two seats away from you is doing with his amazing solve process. 
you do whatever you have to do to survive so that you can get it right as quickly as possible. The worst thing you can do is staring at it and trying again and again and again to create an equation that for whatever reason your mind is not seeing. Find a way around the hurdle. Okay, so how do you do it? 15 is six choose two. How do I know? You should have a lot of these memorized for the early ones. They're actually going to be uh, equivalent to the triangular numbers. So the triangular numbers like one to four is 10, but that's also five choose two. Six choose two is when you take this and add a five to it. And so six choose two, see if you can figure out why that is. Uh, I demonstrated in my intro to counting and probability class why those two are actually related and how you can tell, but you play around with it, see if you can establish it. So this will be 15 because I just add five to this or I can use that calculation. So what is this saying if this was the answer? It's saying there's six players. And since they have to be divided, you might have seen on the paper the numbers four and two. If there were six players, right? Because everybody plays everyone one time. So this is exactly the number of matches you would get for six players. Now, what would happen is within the right-handed players, they would all have to play each other each time generating a win for each other. So if you had six games, and you can just kind of check this out, you would have four choose two is six wins for right-handed players. Meanwhile, the left-handed players would do two choose two, which is only one. Now you're gonna have all the right play all the left. And how many games would that be? Four times two, there'd be eight games. If they won all of the games, they would now have nine wins. Is six times 1.4 equal to nine? The answer is no. If you reverse engineer what we just did with variables, you will find your algebraic solve process. But that's not what I did even at that point. But I could have. I just wanted to kind of go for it and see what happens. So let's try 36. Again, it has to be broken into a two to one ratio. So it would have to be uh, 36 choose two, or not 36, I'm sorry. This would be the result of um, 21 is seven choose two, eight choose two is 28. This would be nine choose two. So that's why I had that written on my paper. If there was nine players, there would be six players on the right, three players on the left column. The six choose two would give in your wins now, you would have 15 wins here, three choose two is three. How many games remain? You could just use 36 minus the 18 that have already been played, or you could multiply six times three. Why do I do it both ways? Because it helps you dodge errors. If you did this and then you checked it the other way and it didn't match, what would you figure out? There's something wrong with your reasoning. I like to cross reference as I work with multiple calculation methods. That way I can avoid mistakes and sillies as we talk about. So the more ways that you know to think about something, the less chance you can get caught in one of those mistakes. So six choose, six times three is 18 more games. What if I gave all of them to the left column? Would it be good? Does it say they win all the games? It doesn't say that, does it? I wanna know if it's even possible for this to happen. Even in the best case scenario where left beats every right player in the 4-2 split, it's not possible. You don't get nine when you multiply six times 1.4. Since it's not possible, then at that point, we have to credit the next one out. And so you say, okay, so now if I take 15, what is 40% of 15? What if I did one plus 0 0.4? Well, 10% of 15 is 1.5 and 40% is just four times that. So it's six. And if you take 15 times one and you add six, you definitely get the 21 here. So it's definitely possible this could be the answer. Guess what? If we didn't violate anything up there and you found a process that does generate the correct the correct criteria, in other words, they have 1.4 times as many wins as the right-handed players do, it doesn't matter if that actually happened or not. It was possible that it could occur. If another answer was also possible to occur, the question would be void and invalid. Can't have two answers that both work. And if you, now you might've violated something. Maybe there was some protocol, like the number of left-handed players must be an even number or something, but you'd have to go back and find that. And we didn't violate. There are twice as many right as left. And if I did assign all these wins, yeah, but we don't know, doesn't matter. It's possible it could occur. Therefore, as long as there's no way it could not occur, then it is the answer.
Okay, um, there, there are situations where it could not occur, right? In other questions, not this one. So the answer is going to be 36. But let's go ahead and go back now. And as I said, let's reverse engineer. Because what if the answer was way over here? Or what if the calculations were a lot more challenging than what we're doing here, which is really kind of basic. Like I, I would say we did this in intro to counting and probability so many times, and you're just plugging in numbers and seeing what happens. Right? And it's surprising, we flicked a couple light switches and the second one was the one that turned on the light. Right? And so, uh, or, or you know, you have various switches for fan and things like that is the analogy that I give in the Amy Mindset video. So now let's go ahead and look at that reverse engineered process. The next thing I'm gonna do is a great plan for more challenging questions, say on the AIME, where you have an average of 12 minutes per question, which you're never gonna use because you're not gonna answer all 15 unless you're essentially a mopper already. So most people, you're probably gonna get maybe time for 10 questions. So you have like 18 minutes per question for the three hour exam. And so let's go ahead and look at it. Well, what do we do? How did we get this? First, we took the total number of games, right? We said 2X and X is the total number of players. And if we did 3X choose two, that's just the answer right now. But what I need to do is take the right-handed games because when a right-handed player plays a right-handed player, a right-handed player wins and they have to play each other. So I take these, the 2x, which is like the four, and you're gonna do 2x choose two. That's right-handed wins. Only, just all automatic right-handed wins. The left-handed wins is going to be x choose two. Then the left and right are going to play. And again, we don't know that the left always defeats the right. We could still kind of use this and say, if I maximize the maximal output, I had the left win every game on the right, so 2x squared, and I was to add this to their win. How do I know it's 2x squared? Just like there were eight games, four players pick one, two players pick one, fundamental counting principle. There's eight games. Very, very basic application of that concept. 2x times x is 2x squared games of right versus left, regardless of whether it's six and three or four and two. So if I add that to the left-hand wins column and I multiply this by 1.4, which I could also say is seven over five, again, be ready to randomly convert things to different forms to help your thinking process. Maybe we want 1.4, I don't know, but for now I didn't have enough space for it, so I just used the fraction. Then this needs to be equal if it's possible that it could work. And so, does it have to be all here? No, but it, you could just kind of use this equation to do the same process I'm doing here, but algebraically. But even now, looking at it, do I want to? Meh, why? Why not just do the numbers thing? You know, don't have to think too hard, don't have to punish our brains and force ourselves to go on the right path. There is no right path. Whatever path gets you the answer as quickly as possible without taxing your brain and leaving you with attrition, right? Damage that you take going forward, that's the best path. It doesn't matter what the prescribed solution is. The prescribed solution for you is survival, okay? So let's go ahead and look at what it looks like. Just out of curiosity, I've never actually done it, not even on my paper. I'm doing it right now. Let's see how it turns out. So 2x choose 2 using this formula is 2x times x 2x minus 1 because n is now playing the role of 2x over two, cancel the two, I get x times 2x minus one is 2x squared minus x. Now I wanna multiply that by 1.4. So I guess I could just do the seven over five thing like I said, and I would get 14x, now I just leave the seven over five out there. I'm breaking a rule right now. The rule I was about to break is never calculate unless you have to. Just leave it like that. Maybe we'll multiply by five instead and not have to deal with fractions that we hate. Okay, other side, x choose two. This needs to equal x times x minus one over two, and then plus two x squared. Okay, so I think I am gonna go ahead and multiply the two over to here and the five over to there. So I'm gonna have 14, two times seven, 14 times two x squared uh, is 28 x squared minus 14 x. And that's going to equal, um, if I multiplied, the two, also the four x squared has to get doubled. Be very careful of that kind of thing when you're trying to save time that you actually don't forget to double your right side. Again, this is the door we open when we force ourselves to go down the path that we're supposed to go down. It's not that you can't do it, but there's pros and cons to every action. 
So now we've got that. The five is down here. It's going to go over to here. So five times this is 5x, and I'm going to distribute it to get 5x squared minus 5x. And then the 5 also has to go to this 2 as well. So you're essentially multiplying by 10 on both sides when you think about it. That makes this 20x squared. Okay, so now what? Uh, let's move things around and combine. I've got 25x squared here. We're going to subtract it off to get 3x squared. Then I've got minus 14x. I got rid of this and this. We're going to go ahead and take the negative 5x and add it to that. And you're going to get minus 9x equals 0. Uh, you can divide by x. Why? What if x was 0? It's not x. There'd be no players. Okay? <laughs> that game doesn't exist. And you're going to get 3x minus 9 equals 0. Now, here's another thing I do all the time. Whenever you're in that situation, which I never would have written on my actual paper, but if you find yourself on that, I love to do this and it's actually math teachers don't like it because oh you're breaking okay watch you just take the negative sign i this for speed it's just kind of a fun little trick and you just turn it into equals is it equal to zero also no but nobody cares because the work that we're doing is not being graded so i don't care that it says equals zero here i just tune it out divide by three divide by three and you get that x equals three these little tiny things like that, you know a bunch of those things from experience, it makes you go faster in the one through 10 process. So if I take x equals three and I plug it in, what is it? Nine choose two. And nine choose two, of course, being 36, nine times eight over two, 36. Let's get to the next problem. We'll do 17 and I, you're gonna see it's actually really, really easy.